Hey everyone, Beachy Al here, and on today's episode, we're gonna be working on our Mark 7, and we're gonna be swapping out the wheel bearings. So, let's get to work because this is Beachy Al's Garage. First things first, if you ever worked on a Mark 7, make sure you jack it up, put it underneath the control arm on your jack stands, that way you're ready to go. So like every project we do, we make sure the car is safe, secure, ready for work because we don't want anything to fall on us or hurt, uh, hurt ourselves you know, while doing work on a, on a car. After that, we gotta take the wheel off and then we're gonna do the next step. So with the wheel now removed, you wanna put two lug nuts on the hub. And the reason for this is we have to break loose the axle nut. So you always put two lug nuts and you put a screwdriver right here in this corner and make sure the rotor doesn't rotate anymore. And then we're gonna break loose this guy. Now what you want is a nice cheap screwdriver that you don't care about damaging. This is a 24 millimeter uh, 12 point, just so you guys know, the star based ones, okay? And then, break that, that guy loose, just like that. Once he's loose, you're good to go. You want it not completely off but just once you get it all the way out turn it about three or four times leave it alone take your lug nuts back off okay next step you're gonna need to remove your uh, your 221 millimeter um, caliper bolts and then make sure you have two long zip ties so we can zip tie the caliper to the spring all right, now after I broke loose the 221 millimeters, I'm gonna grab my little gun here. This is not a really strong impact gun, but it does the trick. Okay, I'm gonna grab our two zip ties. Now, depending on how you wanna do this, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Make sure you hold on to them. You don't want your caliper to drop. And usually cram it somewhere over here. Get it around your coilover or your stock spring. Zip it as high as you can, as high as it'll let you go, pretty much. That way, it's safe, secure, and out of the way. Okay, it's all right. Now that we have that taken care of, caliper's out of the way. Now we gotta take the rotor off. That's going to be using a T30. Just like that. Set that out of the way. There's three T30s to hold the dust shield. Now, you don't have to remove the dust shield, but I'm going to do it just because it's, anno it's annoying and it's in the way. Okay, now that the caliper is removed, dust shield removed, now you see the whole assembly exposed here. Um, we're gonna need to uh, take the two, the three 16s on the bottom off. Uh, those are the three that pretty much hold the um, ball joint in place. And you want the ball joint all loosey goosey uh, because we wanna be able to pop the axle out so we can access the three bolts behind uh, the hub. <clears throat> oh, 
That's not going to work, Ling. No. Old school way it is. <laughs> well, these come off pretty easy. That's good. Okay. That's removed. Next step is to pop the ball joint out of the control arm. And that's where your screwdriver comes in, your flathead. Pretty much you wanna pry it open. And make sure it gets all loose like this. This is what you want. And make sure the ball joint sits underneath the control arm, not above it. That way it gives you the play that you need, okay? Now that you're there, Turn your volume down. I'm gonna have to hit this. Pop your axle out. Take the axle bolt out, move it out of the way. Now, on this one, we wanna turn the steering wheel uh, to the left, and that way we can wiggle this out. Oh, never mind just popped up <laughs> so that gives us pretty much the room we still got to turn the steering wheel as far as we can to the left because we want to able to access the three bolts back here uh, those three are M what is it? Uh, M12s or 12 the M12 uh, 12 point socket that's what holds it back here now if you can get this in a half inch, do it. This guy, these are on very tight. They're with 70 Newton meters plus a 90 degree turn. So that means they're on probably with like 100, 120 pounds of force. So these suckers are on really snug. Highly recommend get an adapter. If you don't have them, get an adapter. Get you a 3 8 to half inch and a breaker bar because these suckers are on here hard. I mean, just giving you guys a heads up. Okay, so now we're gonna turn the steering wheel over to the left so we have more uh, clearance so we can turn the, um, uh, the, the bolt so we can break it loose. And then once we break them loose, we'll use the impact gun just to remove them really quick. And then we gotta pry the wheel bearing and hub off of here. So you'll see here I have the hub turned as much as I can. Um, if you can get it to turn like this, by all means, go for it. On the left side or the driver's side, it's much easier than the um, passenger side because of the axle. The axle get, really gets in the way. So I'm actually pretty happy in how this is turning out. flathead screwdriver and pry right here down here and just make your way 
walk it. There you go. Wheel bearing now successfully removed. You can do some cleaning, it's up to you. Uh, now you're gonna reverse the process. We get brand new wheel bearings. So these wheel bearings are from AutoZone. Uh, these are part number 590616. Brand new. Now, these don't have an orientation. They just go on. Um, there's really no specific way that they uh, go on to. They just have, just gotta line the bol bolts up. That's pretty much it. And then thread them in by hand. Okay, new bearing spins nice and free. Um, they're covered in oil, they have just to prevent rust. It's up to you if you wanna clean them off, they're not necessary to clean these off, so it's up to you. Um, just leave the oil on there, it'll just keep it from rusting longer. <laughs> um, next is to torque these down to 70, new uh, 70 Newton meters, and then plus a quarter, uh, plus a 90 degree turn, all right? So, we torque these down to uh, 70 Newton meters, which is also equal to 51 foot-pounds for you guys, uh, standard versus metric. Um, and then we did a 90, a 90 turn. Once that's done, we now gotta put it all back together. So, first, rotate your ball joint again. Push down on your control arm. I'm actually maybe gonna put the axle in first. Let's see here. Oh, we gotta turn the steering wheel. Derp derp. Not gonna work if I don't turn the steering wheel. Steering wheel has to be turned nice and straight if you want this to work. Axles are the worst. I hate Mark 7. Mark 6 and Mark 7 axles are always like this difficult. It's just difficult for some reason. Mark 4, pff, they want to just fall off.
difficult. Give me a second, I'll be right back. Try to get another set of hands here. All right, so what ended up happening is that I ended up turning the steering wheel too far. So this, I couldn't push the uh, spindle too uh, further, closer to the axle. So I uh, turned the steering wheel more to the right, got the spindle closer to the uh, axle and it was able to pop right in. I popped the control arm back on. So let's get that bolted on. I put the bolt back on for the axle. You just don't want anything to pop back out, so put on as much as you can. Next thing is the brake uh, dust shield. Once you put that on, then the rotor, the caliper, and then we start torquing everything to spec, and then you're done. Next is your rotor. I like having the set screw on top. Just makes it easy for me to line it up. fall down. Next is your caliper. Just get a little tug. Get it out of there. Okay, now we're gonna tighten everything down and then pretty much we're done. We got new uh, wheel bearings installed. Uh, torque everything to spec. So this guy's 200 Newton meters with a uh, 90 degree turn. The three wheel bearing bolts are 70 Newton meters with a 90 degree turn. Um, you can, can, can do the conversion on the torque specs. Just Google. I believe the calipers are I believe 50 or 70 Newton meters as well. Um, don't quote me on that, but I think that's what it is. And that's it. And then you're ready to go. All right. Well, thanks for uh, tuning in, in on this episode of Pinchy House Garage with our Mark 7 TDI Golf Sport Wagon uh, doing wheel bearings. And that was pretty much it. It's straightforward. It's not really hard to do. Uh, we had to replace them because they're starting to make a whirl noise. 
So when you're driving down the road, it just goes wall, wall, wall. That's just the sound, uh, a premature failure on your bearings. Uh, we live in the mountains over here in Ramona, California. So there's a lot of turns that we take and you're gonna wear out bearings a lot sooner than later uh, because of that. So I just did this for preventative maintenance. It's the smartest thing you can do. They're dirt cheap. Um, since they're a hub and a wheel bearing pretty much combined, it's a hundred bucks. Uh, that's a killer deal for a replacement bearing that literally doesn't require any big tools uh, like a press. So you could press one out, press one in. This is just bolt on, bolt off. It's super, super simple. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in this episode of Pinchy House Garage. Smash that like and subscribe button. It always helps us here. The more people we have on the channel, the more content we're allowed to generate because we generate more revenue or just generate more views. And it just helps. And with that, we can make more and more DIYs as things come up uh, sooner or later. Peace out. You guys have yourself a wonderful day.